Hi, in my view, MacBooks are more valuable to invest into than any Windows laptops or PCs out there, excluding the ones who would be buying them for gaming. So gamers, before you run down to the comments, could I clarify that? I have been using a MacBook as my daily driver laptop for 8 years plus. This was my MacBook Pro 13-inch which I bought in 2014 because I started doing some design work and my existing laptop at that time could not cope up with it. And I never knew at that time that while buying that Mac, I'll be so happy with it and for the very right reasons. So beyond the hardware, processor, excellent display, screen, keyboard, speaker, webcam, etc. What are really these reasons? Reason number one, I got six MacBooks at the price of one. Confused? <laughs> Let me help you understand. You see, laptops are just a form factor of showing you the inbuilt operating system. And as a Windows user, I knew Windows XP, Vista and Windows 10 and each of these new windows were released at large variants of time gaps. XP was 2002, Vista the disaster it is was 2007 and the stable Windows 10 that we know was 2015. And since the time I bought the Mac in 2014, each year on year there were massive upgrades to the overall operating system. Sometimes small but sometimes complete redesigns of the operating system. Yosemite, El Capitan, Sierra, High Sierra, Mojave, Catalina were all upgrades that visually changed my experience each year and kept me happy with the same MacBook for over 7 years until finally I upgraded to an M1 MacBook Air. So you see, investing in a MacBook was very valuable from the point of view of getting something new each year. Reason number 2. I learned that there is a world where computers don't crash or hang or there are no blue screens of death. No! <laughs> Apple's Mac operating system is built on Unix. It is a little bit more secure by default than Windows. And as Mac's user base is small, there are lesser third-party bugs or lesser known malicious apps and viruses targeting the Mac OS users. During the El Capitan release, Mac OS also got a lot of security updates, making it slightly bit more airtight. In my seven years of using my previous Mac, it must have hung four to five times where apart from a reboot, I had no other option. And most of these times was when I was actually trying to use DaVinci kind of editing softwares on an Intel dual core i5 processor. And with the current MacBook Air for a year, would you like to take a guess how many times it has hung completely? Zero. Not once. Even though I use a heavy 4K editing workflow, use Affinity Photo Workshops, I just can't tell you the kind of relief that it is. Reason number three. Microsoft's Office legit version, let me repeat, the legit version of Office one-time purchase is for 28,000 rupees. This is something that you will need to create presentations and work in Excel, etc. Yes, you can pay a nominal fee of 4,899 to access it on a yearly basis. But on the Mac, there are powerful preloaded softwares which are free forever. Keynote, for example, can create powerful presentations. Also for the ones who do not need complex softwares like Photoshop to create posters and thumbnails, softwares like Keynote can help you do just that. I also use it for many basic animations of texts or slides which I do not want to create in Fusion. Pages is another great substitute for words. Many authors use Pages for the simplicity of the view and the ability to export and EPUB extension files. iMovie is a superb starting point for many YouTubers and content creators. I have recommended it as one of my best apps for creating digital content for teachers and trainers. You can check out the full video over here. GarageBand for the ones who are interested in music production. Photos for the ones who want to do basic edit and adjustments on their pictures before uploading or printing them. Numbers which is a max substitute for Excel. Somehow I don't find the UI of this as intuitive as an Excel. But technically you can still do the exact same things. But for me the UI of numbers really just never caught on. And the best part is, all these apps are always optimized to the best performance on latest iOS versions. Reason number 4. The sheer speed of using a device. This includes instant on when you open the lid, or the 30 second boot time of the MacBook, using Safari to surf the internet at blazing speeds, accuracy of spotlight search for anything that you need in your MacBook. Things just happen a lot quickly, which eventually leads to spoiling you. And all these are whether your device is powered or unplugged, especially on the new M1 Max. Reason number 5. Apple Ecosystem. If you have an iPhone or an iPad and you use a MacBook, the possibilities of what Apple can integrate in future between these devices are endless. Continuity features allows you to airdrop things between these devices seamlessly. 
Handoff is where you can pick up where you left off on one device and continue on the other. Sidecar is your iPad as your secondary display. Universal Keyboard allows you to copy content such as text, image, photos and videos on one Apple device and then paste the content on another Apple device. And many more such tight integrations. Hope this was helpful in case if you were on the edge of investing into a Mac. One thing which I haven't covered is Bootcamp, which allows you to run and install actually a Windows on MacBooks. But since M1 MacBooks are not yet fully supporting it, I don't think including it over here makes sense. Apple has stated that they are open to working with Microsoft on a solution, so we all can be hopeful for the future. Let me know in the comments below if you think I have missed any points making Mac more valuable. I will see you in the next one.